Hey, welcome to the channel, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel. Today, I want to show you an antenna that I got inspiration from in some of the oddest places. Today, the antenna we're building is going to be known as the Chuck Tenna. Not only am I going to show you one way to build the Chuck Tenna, but at the end of the episode, I'll tell you several different configurations. And if you want to build this, things you could do to make this a very universal portable antenna. Let's jump into things. Those are the materials that will make up the Chuck Tana or a Faraday dog leash antenna. The purpose of this is going to be multi bands, which I'll show you in just a few moments. But the true joy in this is the ability and the capability to have many different variations and configurations for the Chuck Tana. Picture this. Let's get started by drawing a happy little tree here at the HRT Industries School of Art. Now, typically when you have a happy little tree or you're in a happy little forest, you might see a happy little branch. The branch is going to be a very useful thing and depending on how high it is, is going to depend on how long you can make this antenna. So for example, let's say that tree branch you see out at the park is approximately 50 feet in height. That comes out to about 15.25 meters. And if we were to throw that leash or dog lead over that branch, we would need to come back down another 50 feet, which would come out to 100 feet of total leash or possibly 30.5 meters of dog leash. Now with this configuration, and there are many configurations, we're going to need to find a way to mount this into the ground so that the leash doesn't completely fly everywhere when the wind hits. And the perfect way to put this into the ground and keep it so both ends are relatively tight are to use something like this trucker mount ground spike that I built and made a video on multiple years ago. But in short, I used a trucker mount from Amazon.com, which came with a 3 ace SL239 connector. And I took a Harbor Freight 10 spike, put it inside, and now I have a spike to go into the ground and I can mount my antenna right here, which I'll show you in just a second. The last thing that you need is some way to hook up your radials or your counterpoise, the second part of your antenna, to this actual setup. For that, I used a ring connector connected to a power pole adapter. However, if you were using Faraday cloth or even just wires, you could use just two alligator clips. One alligator clip here and one alligator clip on your radials. It's very important to ensure that there's no continuity between the inner inner connector, if you will, and the outer shield. If there is, then your radials and your antenna aren't separate and they're working as one piece. In my scenario, there is no continuity checked with this multimeter. If there was, I would hear a beep. Very good. We already have our ground portion set up and now let's build out the antenna so that it can screw into here. One thing I want to point out is I am not any good at sewing or any kind of technical stuff. So this is something that you can imagine if you have the capabilities of doing better with and experimenting a little bit more than I could. Now don't buy a dog lead just yet because by the end of the episode you might decide you want a longer leash and you'll understand why. Basically I have a dog leash with two ends. I have the leash end that goes onto my dog's collar and I have the end that I hold. It looks like this. And all I'm going to do is take my Faraday tape, like the stuff you see here, and starting at the end of the handle, I'm going to start to apply my Faraday tape. It should be noted the Faraday tape is a little bit wider than the leashes that I chose, but it should be okay. Especially if you have the capability of sewing. As I adhere it to the leash, I'm going to try to keep it tight and I'm going to shoot for about half the length of this lead so that the other half can go over without becoming part of the antenna. But again, you might want that. When everything is said and done, we should have in today's scenario about 35 feet of Faraday tape attached to our dog leash or dog lead. And then of course I have a bunch of extra that I'm going to be able to throw over the tree and it doesn't then become part of the antenna, right? We need to be able to attach our antenna or our dog leash to this device here. And we're going to do that with a three eighths inch bolt and a small incision on the antenna near the handle. 
Here, you could see I put a 3 8 inch bolt through an incision made on the dog leash, and then I would screw the bolt into the actual tent spike. However, if you were really good with sewing and other capabilities, you might take something right here like a button, and maybe you have a case that goes onto here and snaps into place with different changing out auto transformers. So depending on your length, you could have a four to one for a Delta dude, a portable Delta loop antenna, or maybe you want a nine to one for a random wire antenna. Maybe you want a 49 to one because you have a good amount of wire here, like 65 feet for a 40 meter and fed half wave. Maybe you want a vertical then you don't need to do a lot of this, but you will need to cut certain spots depending on what bands on the vertical you want. So there are a lot of configurations and that's why I had cautioned you to not buy a leash just yet until you decide how many feet you want. But for right now, I decided to go with a 10 meter quarter wavelength. By the way, there's nothing here saying I couldn't have done a five ace 10 meter antenna because I have enough wire to do so. I just need to make a small incision here to separate the Faraday tape where the 10 meter mark will be. And in my case, it's somewhere around 98 inches. My small incision looked like this. I went out and I tested everything and my standing wave ratio was acceptable with radio wires in place. However, what if I want to be able to connect this back up so that I could, I don't know, go operate 20 meters. And that's where I have this right here, which slides on down and it now connects the two. So for example, if I were to check for continuity, now we have continuity, now we don't. 10 meter antenna, random wire. You know, that's great. All of a sudden we have a certain length of wire and we have the lead end here that clips onto the collar, which has a little bit of weight to it, but I'm not gonna be able to throw it over a tree so what do we do in this scenario? And this is amazing. Recently, I made a video about these spikes for ham radio portable masts that I have made. And it just so happens that if you have an M10 bolt, you could take the M10 bolt, it will go right through this lead right here. You could screw it on. And you have some weight in here with a tent spike. Additionally, you could just add sand. Anyway, after you have this attached, it's as easy as throwing this over a tree, as long as you have the strength. If not, go hire a bodybuilder. Again, I wanna point out that if you have the skills, maybe you could put a rivet in here, and that way when you turn the three A's connector, it doesn't turn the leash with it. But it still gives continuity between the bolt and, of course, the leash. And just to check, we're good. Perhaps there's two things I still haven't shown you about the vertical antenna or the chuck antenna today. And the first thing is, is after you get done throwing this on a tree, this should be heavy enough to come back down to ground. It's called gravity. It's a pretty interesting concept. But now all of a sudden you have the dog leash right here. And if you bring it straight down to your tent spike, you could either put it in through the bottom here so it holds together or you could just snap it onto here because remember this dog leash part or the collar part, it's not connected to anything metallic. And so therefore there's no continuity between the actual Faraday cloth and the clip. The only other thing you're going to need is you're going to need your radio wires. A good rule of thumb is you have four radio wires at least. The more the better, but at least four radio wires at a quarter wavelength long of the band you plan on operating. If you're going to be operating multiple bands, just use a quarter wavelength of the lowest band you plan on operating. For example, 20 meters. And although that may be confusing, my buddy, the DX Commander, has a great video on it, which I will link below. Now we've talked and we have spoke about all these cool configurations you could do, like have a auto transformer in between the antenna wire and your connector as well as having, oh, I don't know, multi-band vertical antenna in your hands, with very portable, by the way. But what if I told you you could also do a dipole configuration if you had two leads? Wow, that's actually really cool. And if you could throw it over a high tree, the higher, the better. Height is might with radio. What if I told you you could also do a portable delta loop antenna, for example? 
you throw this over a tree and all of this is full of Faraday tape. Now, all of a sudden on the tree, you can come down to this point as well as this point. And your goal is, is to make a triangular shaped antenna, which is a loop that will connect to a four to one. And it should be off of the ground. For example, having something like these little clips right here will allow you to have your four to one right here, as well as have this go back up and over the tree while keeping it tight. Then all you have to do is take 550 cord and bring it down on an angle to the ground into a tent spike. This should hold it up to six feet off the ground. And we haven't even mentioned all the different possibilities and capabilities when you have yourself a mast. There's a lot of possibilities that you could open up with this antenna setup. Think about having one antenna in the field that does one thing vertical, as opposed to having one antenna in the field that does many things versatile. I'd much rather be able to have an antenna that could be used as a dipole, a 49 to one, a four to one and nine to one, multi-band vertical and much, much more that I probably can't even think of yet. And my goal today was to give you the tools and the resources and some information so that you could start experimenting. But it's not just all about experimentation as much as it is learning how to think outside the box. All of a sudden you have a surrounding of things that could be used for engineering and to stimulate your brain so you don't sleep for the next 12 days. And that's what my goal was today, to teach you to learn how to experiment and of course to teach you to think outside the box. What you choose to do with this antenna is pretty much endless and I'd love to hear what you've done in the comments below. Thanks for watching the channel and 73.